MBs, Mo, welcome to the Players Perspective Uncensored Podcast. Good to be here with you two brothers, man. What's going on with y'all, man? What's going on with you, MB? What's going on, fellas, man? I'm, I know it's been a while. I know you didn't ask me a minute, but, man, it's, you know, battling through, uh, uh, how I said, uh, I've been turning down a lot of podcasts. I'm like, you know what, I'll just go ahead and let Larry O be the first one to, to break the seal. First man, and I, appreciate, I appreciate it, bro, because we, we go back a ways, man. So going back to Little League football and basketball, man, I, I appreciate the honor, man. So first thing I want to ask you before we get into the podcast, man, is like, you know, me and you've talked about bourbon a little bit. Um, you know, do you like bourbon? Do you have a go-to? Uh, talk to me a little bit about bourbon. Let's see. So when I moved back, you know, I was trying to get into it. I did a Buffalo's tour, I want to think, I say, right? Uh, you know, they were showing, you know, the age and how it's made in the process. And so if I had a go-to, if I had to, it would be blends. But, okay, you know, nice, I blends, nice, nice, nice. Yeah, nice. yeah. You ain't got to do a lot to it. Uh, not as harsh to me. So I think if I had to go blends, you know, nice. bourbon would be blends. Now, when yeah. I was out to the house, now you went to the cabinet and pulled out Elijah Craig 18 year now. So you know what you're doing a little bit in that bourbon. <laughs> yeah, you know, I had a collection, man. I, you know, because a lot of people come over and that's what they want. You know what I mean? So, right, yeah, right. That's yeah, official. That's Friday official. Mm -hmm. So, so let, let's, let's jump into it, man. Just to give a little background, uh, Mike and I go way back, man. Uh, we met actually playing Little League football, uh, played on Team Louisville. Uh, we've just been interconnected with basketball since we were younger, man. Just been good friends since, man. And uh, it's just been a pleasure to watch you go about your career, man, from the time we was at Mail, uh, both ending up at U of L and then you into the NFL, man. So before we even get started, man, once, just want to congratulate you on a, a wonderful career, man, and really just making it to a, a lot of places guys only dream of, man. So just having that blessing of being able to get there, man. Kudos to you, brother. I appreciate it, man. It was uh, a lot of grind. You know how it is. Both of y'all know how it is. You got to grind, bro. Sometimes people don't understand what it takes. There's some sacrifices in there, especially when you've been at it for some years, you know? For sure, for sure. Now, you were one of the two best athletes to ever come out of the state of Kentucky. Basketball, football. And at Mel High School, man, we had a great run. And after I left, you guys had the opportunity to go up and play against LeBron James and St. Vincent, St. Mary. So talk about that experience a little bit, you know, having the opportunity to play on the basketball court. Because I don't think a lot of people know how good you were on the basketball court. Everybody knows you for football, but a lot of people don't know how good you were at basketball. But just talk about that experience as well, going to, getting a chance to go and play against LeBron up in uh, Ohio. Nah, man, that was a... Uh... That was huge. I mean, we done AAU basketball coming all the way up, you know, through starting like seventh grade or whatnot. And then, shoot, I mean, with us being there, you, we had all those D1 players, you know, we got to the top level. I mean, at one point I was a Nike shoe test, I think, as you had left by then. Um, but then we ended up going up. We played Oak Hill, like you said, which was Mellow's team. Then we had, you know, the Oak Hill, or not Oak Hill, like you said, St. Vincent, St. Mary. And, man, that atmosphere was like a, a male ballot game the year we went regional. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was right. packed. But you had the biggest, to my understanding, Ron Harper, you know, the Chicago Bull, let old school. Now, he was in the building. There was a couple of them. I mean, dude, you foul LeBron. They, the whole game stopped. They let him tuck in his jersey. You know what I'm saying? Like, give him a little treatment, then let him shoot his free throws. So, I mean, that game was fun, man. We we lost by one point. Uh, but, I mean, dude. He's he's showing why he why he's one of the best you know to ever do it. I mean, we had him at I think five points in the first half, but he finished with thirty seven. Mm. <laughs> but was you checking him though? I right. was not checking him. I was not checking. Him. <laughs> they had uh Greg Ballard and Levar checking Levar Carter. Oh, that's a tough matchup for them too. Yeah, they was doing it for the size. I mean, yeah. I, I didn't do nothing. I, I got my twenty twenty five and got on that. <laughs> <laughs> That was fun though, man. Right. I actually made a highlight. I, I was taking the ball out of bounds and they was pressing us. I threw it across the middle. He stole it. I mean, he came down with one of them. I was about to jump with him. I was like, yeah, nah. What? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Now coming out of mail, man, you were Mr. Football. Uh really should have been Mr. Basketball as well, but we both know how that goes. But you were great athlete in both sports. You were two-way star. 
how or when did you know that you were going to pursue football as your future career? Uh, first off, to hell to all the people that didn't give me Mr. Basketball. Because no, <laughs> I, no I one knows. I can relate. <laughs> where, where, Ross, where Ross Nelson is, what he's doing, what has he done? He went to somewhere and set the bench. They probably don't know who that name is. Uh, <laughs> exactly. So uh, I think what made me select basketball is um, it might have been my freshman year. I wanted to be a you know, quarterback. Football. You what made you select uh, football? For football. Right. Uh I don't know, it's kind of was forced upon me. Well, let me I mean, we getting uncut. cut. So I had a meeting with Rick Patino, right? Mm -hmm. And I sat in his little office with him. And uh, cause every time I went on, you know, talk to a school, I had to do both. I wanted to do both. And that was right. the plan. So I had this meeting with Rick Patino because I seen him coming in all the AU games. We had open gym at Little uh, at Mel. Remember y'all was playing there, all of mm -hmm. us, John, everybody. But I got in this meeting with him, and literally he's sitting to the right of me, and homie didn't pay no. He didn't look me in my, my face. He ain't say. He was just like, "Yeah, you'll be a good addition to the team. You better than Greg Tense, all this." And I'm like, "He he ain't even looking at me eye to eye." I'm like, "Man." I don't, you know, that whole school mentality, like if somebody can't look you, you know, as your eyes, you know, in your eyes when you're having a conversation, I don't trust them, right? Yeah. So I was like, yeah, I think I'm gonna just go ahead and leave it alone. And I thought the quarterback spot would be uh, pretty much open if I, when I was a freshman. Uh, so I was like, you know what? I'll just stick to football. Right, right. It was tough for me though, cause you know, y'all seen me in them open gyms and all that stuff, man. And I got that call. You can't go down there and play no more. I'm like, like, what is this? You know, so <laughs> I ain't know that we were still playing the mirror ball, so we was cool. Right. What made what made you choose Louisville? And if you didn't go to Louisville, where would you think you had went to? So I was gonna go to Ohio State. Mm. And I took my visit there and I love that place. It was huge. Um I had a friend that uh, by the name of Corey James that was that male with me, played football with me. He was going yeah, – I told him where I was going. He ended up getting in the whole nine. I was pretty much committed, man. And then – Big Marcus uh, was up there. Oh, Marcus was up there, absolutely. I can't forget about him. Uh, and Coach Redman's son, Chris Redman, obviously, you know, played under by Petrino. I want to say either in Atlanta or somewhere, you know, they was a coordinator for him or even back in the day at Louisville or something like that. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that's the whole quarterback coach, right? So that's that role and that relationship that they had that, you know, he can get you to that next level. And so I, I was like, you know what? You know, I'm going to go ahead and uh, commit to Louisville. And so I changed my mind. I mean, but it was crazy because on a Friday, Bobby Petrino was at my house uh, recruiting me at Auburn. So we had a basketball game that night. Really? I'm on the free throw line. I hear some fans say, I mean, that male, like, Yo, Bobby Petrino just, you know, he left Auburn and he's going to come to Louisville. So that Saturday, soon after the game, the next day he came back to my house as a Louisville coach trying to give me the Louisville. Wow. Wow. So like you said, man, you were coming out of mail. You were a All-State, All-American quarterback. But you get to L and you switch to running back. Talk to me about what went into that decision and talk about some of the mechanics and some of the things you had to change to go from being a quarterback to a running back? Uh, man, you know, we grew up down there in Muhammad Ali football league, bro. Like, outside playing pitch back tackle, you know what I'm saying? Tackle on the sideline, that whole nine. So, uh, I just never done it as far as a running back. Uh, I got structured as team base, right? Mm -hmm. So, when I never was coached and, uh, you know, I ain't really, I ain't really care for it too much, cause I was a quarterback in my mind. You know, I feel like I done showed the world that I can throw the ball and the whole nine. Uh, right. And then the way they did it, bro, they was, <laughs> they was cold with it. <laughs> <laughs> How they moved me, I'm telling you. So we in, we in camp, and uh, usually quarterbacks have on a certain color jersey. You know, yellow, green, right. red, or black means like don't touch them. Right. Yeah, they threw me in there with a. Uh, a red jersey, live bullets, like 
tackle me if you can. So I'm back there just making plays, doing what I'm doing. You got Stephon LaFleur and everybody else. They get back there, defense come and touch them. I'm like, man, hold on, man. Why they why they trying to hit me if, you know, I'm supposed to be the next one coming through? Right. Then next thing you know, they still putting in this play called half back toss pass. I'm thinking, all right, well, now the coach is finding a way, you know, to give me the ball, let me throw the ball, whatever. Man, half back toss pass turning to half back toss. Turn into me. <laughs> <laughs> turned to me not being in the quarterback meeting room no more. I'm sitting there with the running backs. I'm like, man, they – oh, they didn't – they got you really good on that. Yep. Quick for this. Quickly, yep. And then the next thing you know, man, I, I wasn't happy about it at first, but, man, they did a great job of uh, – I mean, we had a stable of running backs, Lionel Gates, Eric Shrupp, and Kobe Smith, you know, all those cats. Uh, just about everybody except for – all of them with pro, right? And they had right. a chance. At it. So, uh he was just good at, you know, getting the ball in people's hands. So was it a different process as far as you studying? Because I know as a quarterback, you looking at the plays, you got to know where everybody's supposed to be, the linemen, the wide receiver routes. But now you switch to running back. Like, how was the studying or how was the mindset different once you switched to being a running back? Well, because, you know, quarterback's more, more finesse. But once you get to that running back, ain't, ain't nothing finesse about that. It's like, I'm a bruiser now. Yeah, nah, well, see, I had a little bit of that, I guess, running back, quarterback mentality from male because I, I wouldn't run unless I had to, you know what I'm right. saying? Uh, but as far as learning stuff, as a quarterback, you had to know who's the offense, O-line blocking. You know, you didn't really worry about much coverage when you run the ball. But, you know, all the, all once you seen how, who's going to block who. You know, you know where your scene was, you know, the, the scheme. And, I mean, you just get up north and south, man, and I wouldn't, Again, man, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't going to break off 80 yards unless I had a head start. So I'm going to pound you to death. You know what I'm right, saying? So, right. And uh, my goal was to make you feel me before I felt you. So right. it's either give you a, give you a one-two, get you off guard, and put this shoulder in your chin. Like, I'm cool with that before you just run into me. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. Mike, um, I know you talked about this plenty of times. At U of L, you get hurt. How did you keep your mind sharp and focused? And what went into the decision for you to go pro after not playing all year? Uh, man, that's a good one. Uh, sharp, bro. I just had to be tough for the family, bro. Like, I mean, I remember that. Again, that's this whole, that whole situation, series, whatever you want to call it, uh, incident. Right. It'll never leave my life. It'll never leave who I am, right? So... It was kind of like being strong for them, uh, knowing like it's just a broken leg. Um, I don't know. I had the right people in my corner as far as the trainers. That was a little Matt uh, now, who's the head trainer there now. Uh, Dwayne Trailer, who was my guy then, uh, and I left Louisville because I don't think they necessarily dealt with an injury like that. Mm. You know? So I was like, you know what? I think I can get the best uh, doctors and. Uh, treatment and, you know, skill set going to the next level. Uh, I paid for it in the draft or whatnot, but, I mean, who's to say that I would have, if I had came back and I still wasn't ready, I would have got drafted at the same time. So, um, again, man, I just had to be strong for the family. And also some situations like, well, I, you know, I was a Heisman candidate. You know, we could have won a national championship possibly if I didn't get hurt. Um you know, if I come back, I play again, who's to say that I won't get hurt, that I may not get drafted again. So if I'm hurt and I'm still this high on the draft board, hey, man, I got to go get this money while I can. You know, you never know what may happen again if I come back to college or, or anything. So, man, in, in a sense, you ain't really got an option. You got to you know, you got to take the opportunity if it's in front of you. Yeah, I mean, that was, uh, you know, I was banging off of my, my work that previous year before because I had led the nation in scoring. Right, and I mm -hmm. feel like I had shown what I can do. And then you had other players who, uh, like Willis McGahee before me, uh, who was at Miami, you know, he tore up his whole knee. Mm -hmm. Homie still got drafted in the first round. You know, I'm thinking like, shoot, I still can, at worst case, fall second. You know what I mean? But I don't know what happened to, I don't know, it just turned out differently, right? So I ended up falling from the fourth to the fourth round, 100. Uh, had to have a second surge. Uh, they put a bigger rod in my in my leg, and then after that, within three days, because for six months with the first surgery, I was uh, still walking with a limp. 
Still working out, but I just couldn't run yet. But after the combine, the medical recheck, come back in, they installed a bigger rod in my leg. And then in three days, I was jogging. So I was ready to roll by the time I uh, got to Oakland. So that's essentially two years, man. And that leads into my next question. So you really set out the whole, you know, last year at U of L, you get drafted uh, to Oakland. You know, you have another surge. You set out another year. That's a lot of time not to play football, man. Because you know, as you know, as you know, football is a sport you got to continuously play. It's not like you know something you could take time off from. It's like you know, once your body kind of gets used to that contact, you know, you kind of need to sustain it for real to kind of keep your body used to it. But when you don't have it for a couple of years, how, how was that to come back from it, man? Even though I wasn't playing, I was around it, right? So, you know, that turned once you leave school, even though college is a job, right? Once you leave Thanks. to go to school, you know what I'm saying? You're around it all day, every day. So no matter what, they had me outside running, like getting in shape, you know, mm -hmm. uh, sitting in meetings, learning, I mean, whatever they did, you know, could have done to keep me sharp, I done it, right? But I had a I had a three week to four week window. They put me on the pup, uh, physically unable to perform list, and they allowed me to practice with the team. And so that helped to understand like, ah, this, you know, that's when I was getting adjusted to the game. Like, oh man, I can do this, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> not that I ever doubted myself, I just hadn't played with the big boys yet. Right, get, get that confirmation you need. Yeah, because I missed all the senior bowl games, all the, you know, all the stuff that come with the, the fun part of, you know, that transition from college to pro. So I missed all that. And uh, give me a give me a rookie hazing story. Bro, you know what? I didn't I got lucky. I mm. got lucky, man. Uh mm. I swear to God I got lucky. They was cutting everybody's hair. And you know, I ain't had no line then. You cut my hair. <laughs> <head. laughs> I might have been wild if they got me, right? <laughs> but uh only thing we did, uh we went out, we took some of the old head, well, some of the players out to dinner. And uh, I think we took, they took us to Root Chris or something. We had to get a party bus for them. Uh, I mean, they was ordering steak, lobsters, you know, bottles of Louis, the whole nine. And <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> taking it home, you feel me? But we were, luckily, uh, Richard Seymour happened to come from, the Patriots to Oakland. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, he was kind of the, he walked in, everybody listened to him. Like he's that, cause he just, how he carry himself. I mean, he go, he's a hall of famer probably. He should be coming up two Super Bowl rings. Like he just demands a certain type of thing. So he's like, this is what we're going to do fellas. They slotted it off draft pick. So whoever had the most money had to pay the most. So it was like a scale. And so I fell down, you know, I tweaked in on in there, you know, I probably spent about, you know, three to five grand max. So like, cool, everybody else. Right. Told me that. <laughs> they had to hit that bag. So, you know, other than that, you had to get, you know, food for them before games. I would go on the bus, uh, carry some equipment here and there. But again, see, I missed all that because I wasn't practicing with them. Oh, gotcha, right? so, gotcha, gotcha. Um, so now I, we had to get up and, uh, during camp and do some type of either sing your school song or dance or something like that. So, uh, but it wasn't as bad as other people got, man. I seen them getting duct taped to the goal post and all that. And <laughs> they're throwing, they're throwing in the cold tub, full equipment on. Like, nah, we, you know, we, we didn't, uh, we didn't get it that bad. Mm. Yeah. So now, um, man, we all have people we look up to who was someone might looked up to to help him become a better running back? Man, that's a good question, bro. Uh, I don't know. I kind of set goals amongst myself. You know what I'm saying? Like, my goal was always to be better than I was the year before. And I know it probably sound like average, right? Mm -hmm. But, like, I don't know. It's kind of like I had the style. I want I wanted hands like, you know, uh, what's his name? Brian West, Westbrook that played for Philly, right? Mm -hmm. I want able to maneuver in and out, cut like Bo Jacks, you know, stuff like that. So I wanted to have be that person that was very, we can count on me, you know, when it's 31 or 35, you know what I'm saying? So, and I watched Emmitt Smith, Barry Sanders, and all those cats growing up, and I just seen how locked in they were when they were playing. And uh, I tried to be a student of the game the best I could, you know, because I really wasn't taught how to play running back when I was uh, in college. 
you know, no disrespect to Greg Nord, but he was a tight end coach and a running back coach, you know, but he was more tight endish. You know what I'm saying? So it was kind of you getting through college and skill levels. See, I don't think trying to go back, my bad, backtracking. I believe Louisville didn't know that I was going to be a good running back. I feel like they got an athlete. I was going to be Louisville's big recruit, you know, and I don't know if they knew a position for me because I think they already had plans to bring in, you know, the other guy. I'm going to say that right. Right, right, <laughs> um, right, right. And uh, they just wanted to get you on the field, knew you'd be I good or whatever, just to get you out there. Yeah, because at one point before I, ha- I had broke my foot as a sophomore, I was playing defense. And I don't know if people knew that. And I had got down to about 2.30 or whatnot. And it was going both ways. So, uh, I don't know, man. Just being around, fast forward, but being around other players, you know, like uh, Dominique Rose, who won the Super Bowl, you know, at when Indy when he came to Oakland. Uh, my boy named Rock Cartwright, you know, who, who's helped, who got me into golf, you know, how they was professional at the game. And, uh, and then me and Derrick McFadden pretty much battling and we had a coach by the name of Tom, Tom Raffman and then uh, Kelly Skipper. And they were just, they was good, you know? Right. Now I remember me and you talking, uh, I think you had just left Oakland and you were on your way to Chicago. And in Oakland, you, like you said, you were playing with Derrick McFadden. Derrick McFadden got most of the carries. Then you go to Chicago. Chicago has Matt Forte. And I remember me and you talking. He was like, man, I feel fresh. Like, you know, it's not like I've had a whole lot of carries. Like, I feel fresh. So let's just let's, let's talk about your whole experience in the NFL as a whole. And do you feel like you might have got slighted because you never maybe didn't have the opportunity to be the, the low carrying back to get most of the loads? And just, you know, you think your injury set you in that position. I just talk about, you know, how you feel about your career, how maybe, you know, did it go like you wanted or did it not go like you wanted? You know, just talk about your experience and how you really feel about it. It's a tough situation, bro. Like, uh, how do I say it? The, obviously, I wouldn't change the experience at all, right? Shit, that's every man's dream to right. go to that level, to right. be able to provide for your family. You know, right. do it. We know you're minutes. grateful, man. We we ain't saying that you're not unappreciative, but like hell, like hell, man. If I'm like, listen, man, I want to be the I want to be the number one back. Shit, you can say that. You you know, we know you're grateful and appreciative. Yeah. We know that. Man, it came to a point when I was like, honestly, this is some bullshit for real. Don't <laughs> <laughs> be quite, you know, after uh, because again, I broke the leg. It was a bone. It was an injury. A mm-hmm. rehab. I show what I can do. Uh, and then I remember when I was uh, my second year in the league playing against uh, Tampa Bay, we had a, they had to beat us to go to the playoffs. So Justin Fargus get hurt, Darren McFadden get hurt, and uh, Tom Raffin is a running back coach. And I'm sitting on the side and I'm like, bruh, there's no one else to play. Why y'all keep putting these dudes in the game? Right. Like they hurt. Excuse my language, what the fuck y'all bring me here for if you ain't gonna put me in the game? You know, I was mad, bro. The next thing you know, they put me in. I guess I was running angry. I had 20, 27 carries for 177, two touchdowns. John uh, Jake, uh, John Gruden got fired, time, but then made it to the playoffs, and that was it, you know. So I'm thinking going into the next year, shoot, that's my, yo, I just showed it. Like, I, like you know, remember, they drafted Darren McFadden, number four, overall. Mm-hmm. They ain't going to sit their money, guy. You know, that's not going to happen. Right. Don't get me wrong, he was the – he can play. He just had a lot of injuries, though. He can. He's a. He's a workhorse. He's a. He's a grinder. He's legit, right? Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I've been in the system where we had three of them dudes, and they found a way. Right. And then, you know, then you fast forward it. Uh, my last year in Oakland, he got hurt. I started about ten games. I almost ran for a thousand, and then I become a free agent. Timing is everything, right? So by this time. I'm banking on uh, his name was Michael Turner that was in San Diego behind LaDainian Thompson that he was going to, uh, he signed for like to Atlanta, like four for 20. So mm-hmm. I'm like, you know, I'm thinking, shit, I'm finna hit, I'm finna re up. Like, you know, I'm good. I can tell mom and daddy stop working. Like, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna make this happen. Right. I get a call from my agent. He's like, I got some good news and some bad news for you. He's like, the market not pretty much tanked. Like, the whole, you know, one back system is pretty much gone. 
it's like, you know, they ain't paying nobody no more, you know. Right. So then I fly to Cincinnati because it was between, it was only had three suits Cincinnati, Seattle, and Chicago. Mm-hmm. And that it comes a point in time, it's like you, you don't chase the ring when you ain't had the money. You know, and this nice. league is and this league is like not for long, right? So I'm like, you gotta right. go get your bread, right? So I'm thinking I'm at least gonna money's going up as well, at least hit a 20, something like you know, mm-hmm. like turn of it. And so I took a visit to Cincinnati. I had coaches there that knew me. They I played it, you know, they saw me play that I've talked to, uh, thinking they I'm gonna sign there. I'm like, that's cool, that's a perfect market. All the little people and they watch me play, come up to the games. Like, I'm gonna right, bring right. Jersey sales the whole nine. They end up signing a guy named Ben Jarvis Green Ellis. He set the market for like, I think nine million. I don't know if it's like three for nine or something like that. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, man, here you go. So then Seattle hit was like three for 10. And then Chicago, I got four for 14, right? It's all out there. So people can look it up. Mm-hmm. And my agent told me, and I'm sitting on the phone with my, with my boy, Rock Cartwright, who's played in the league for 10 years. And he looked at me, and I'm, I'm in fucking tears, bro. He's like, what you crying for, man? Like, you just got paid. And I'm like, it, it ain't even about the money. It's about how, you know, you, you value yourself a certain way. Right. So you broke your leg. You've been through it all. You came back. you still balling. I'm at the, I'm still, I am who I am, right? Do that right. bell count. And then you get that. I was, bro, I, that, I was hurt, cuz. I ain't gonna lie. Like, I was crushed. For, for sure, that. for sure. Yep, and then that kind of set the tone going into into Chicago, but it wasn't Chicago's fault, but they paid me. So, I, I mean, it was just a different, different culture, too, from Oakland to Chicago. Oakland, man, we had fun, bro. Like, I know the records was kind of bad, but that last year or so, man, we went eight and eight, swept the division, didn't go to the playoffs. But that was like a brotherhood. You know, I went to Chicago. It's like I hung out with the defense. You feel me? Like Air Lacker, Briggs, uh, Peppers. You know, Judas Peppers, uh, Tim Jennings. Like we would. That was I was on the defensive side, hanging out, going out. You know, dinner stuff like that. So pause. I need to hit the pause button yeah. now. I need verification, true or false, about Jamarcus Russell in these blank videotapes. You did know what, he, man? Did, did they give him blank videotapes for him to go and review, and he came back and said he understood what was on there, but wasn't really nothing on the blank tapes? See, I can't – honestly, I cannot answer that question. Oh, okay, cool. Okay, because cool. dude, I know who put it out there, Kirk, Kirk Morrison, right? He's a – he was on my defensive side, and you know, he was a little older, probably about a year or two older than me. So he the middle linebacker. So I don't know how that got to him, right? So I hung out with Jamarcus as a rookie. I was at his crib, hanging out with him the whole night. We hooped together, because homeboy had some bang, he's had some game too. Even though he was big and the whole night he can hoop. And uh, I just can't answer that question. Oh, okay, cool. They cool. did everything. They, they did everything they wanted to to you know try to get him to be successful. Uh, man, it's just didn't. Anyway, I mean, he just this he moved a little out. different. Gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. it wasn't you. So gotcha. I, cool. But I, I can't answer that. But my thing is, man, let the man let him live, right? Hmm. You know, he had his chance. Don't 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 knock down another man to you know to get you more views. Right. That's right. It. Right. So. Right. Mm-hmm. Mike, now this is no hate. What's your thoughts when you see Tim Tebow, Tim Tim Tebow, get another shot in the NFL? <laughs> Man, I got. I ain't hating. I'm glad that he get opportunity, but I still got a lot of bro. I didn't get a second chance at thirty years old. Mm. No trouble. No talking bad to coaches. No none of that. Right. In shape the whole nine. I worked out with Tim Tebow. He's a hell of a dude. What you see is what you get. Right. You know? But come on, man. You say everybody's old at 30. Why he still why he still trying to rock? Right. I, I wish I hope I hope he prove everybody wrong. That whole old at 30 is some bull crap. Y'all was still balling in the 30s and probably felt good. You see the homie Dante Smith still win a championship. Yeah. 37. Yeah, you see. Going you on see 38. 
You yeah. see LeBron still balling. Everybody's still balling at 30. You know what I'm saying? So Frank Gore, I feel like he's like 50 years Man, old. Man, Frank Gore been in the league two decades, <laughs> seem like. <laughs> I stopped at 39, shit. As long as you take care of yourself, man, you rolling, man, you yep. sure you good, man. Yep. Right. Now you're a big time traveler and you're a big time golfer. Um, you know, what's your, what's your handicap? What, you know, I know heard you said you, one of your OGs on the football team got you into golf. Um, you know, have you had a chance to play with any PGA guys? Man, I got humbled real quick, bro. I played with some LPGA girls. Uh, her mm -hmm. name was Sadina Parks. Um, playing from the same tee boxes, hitting the ball just as far, sticking it closer, right? <laughs> I played with, <laughs> she was just on it, bro. Uh, played with a dude named Charlie Belgian who was on tour. Uh, played with some long drive champions. I mean, they hitting the ball like 340, you know? So, uh, but that's a humbling game, bro. Like, I guess it's like trying to shoot ball with Steph Curry. Like, you know, nah, I'm, he's, the, he's the greatest shooter, right? So it's the same about golf. So I had learned my lesson. So when it came to golf, my mentality even now is like, I want to play with people better because I'm going to get better. Right, right. My, my index is the lowest I've got was about a two, two eight. So now I'm about a four seven. And the best I shot was a, a 70, even par. Nice. Now, where's your favorite course? Because I called you one time and you were over in Ireland for a PGA Tour event. So, I mean, like, you're a serious golfer. Like, the people don't know, like, you flew to Ireland for a golf event. So, like, you serious about it, man. So, what's your favorite course? I shoot over in Ireland. It's a place called the Derry Manor. I, we was on, like, a seven-day road trip over there, played, and then watched the big boys play. Uh, and I played in California. Man, I've been to Pebble Beach, Bandit Dunes, been to Whistling Straits, Aaron Hills. Bro, I got a list. I've been everywhere, man. My, my bucket list is to go to Hawaii and play. Mm. Nice, so, nice, I'm gonna get that nice. Soon. So I got a trip coming up to Scotland, I want to say next year. So, uh, I mean, I ain't, I ain't, I got a lot going on, but I don't, right? You know, right. <laughs> I got the whole, you know, the disinfectant spraying thing was going for a minute. And then I'm doing some financial, liter uh, financial literacy teaching to youngins, you know, that's nice. made the league and stuff like that, and trying to. Teach them to navigate through family, friends, entourages, you know, buying cars and stuff that you don't need, man. So, right. you know, I got a lot going, but not a lot. You feel me? So I'm, I'm going to make time for golf. For sure. Mm -hmm. For sure. Mike, now we reached a part of the podcast, man. We call our Burr Proof segment of Rapid Fire Questions, man. We're going to shoot them to you. Put you on the hot seat. Don't give it a lot of thought, man. Just give us your first answer. We're going to roll with it. Let's go. Which NFL player is the best hooper that you've played against? Ooh, I ain't played against much, much though. I played against Ron Carey, RC. Uh, I, Jamarcus was nice too. Oh, Ron Carey was nice. Aaron, North Carolina, Ron Carey was nice. Yeah, yeah. but I played, I mean, that hell AAU circuit, bro. You played against Marcus Spears, you know? All yeah. The yeah, I remember Big Marcus, yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's a ton of them. Yeah, okay. yeah. If somebody could play your life in a movie, who would it be? Golly, <laughs> I ain't never thought about that one. You know, I don't know, man. I don't know. I can't answer that one. I guess Michael B. Jordan is the one who's doing all the little football <laughs> acting, right? There you go. <laughs> That's all I can think. <laughs> uh, what's something that you would never do again? Something I would never do again. Mm-hmm. Nah, bro, everything I try to do, I make sure it's what I want to do, you know, so it ain't no regrets. Uh, first thing you did with your first NFL check? All day, parents a new crib. Dope. Okay. Dope. No question. Dope. Yeah. Yeah. Who's probably the hard – who, what do you say? Nah, go ahead. I ain't start spending money until I actually was getting paid. Mm. So, like, I was doing, like, signings and stuff. I paid off my grandmother's house. Doing signings, paying off cars, sending my little brother to school. And then mm. I started getting money. And that's when I started doing stuff for myself. What you supposed to okay. do. Dope. Yeah. Who's probably the hardest hitter that you've played against? See, as tough as a running back, you get hit by everybody. Right? Uh, but I got caught in college playing against Miami on a kickoff team. I was on kick return. I think that's the first time I – 
I want to say I probably had two concussions. This is the first one. I caught myself. I got banged up twice. Now I think about it. Uh, James Harrison laid me out too. The other. <laughs> I seen that one. On the <laughs> yeah, you know, big boy. He got that leverage. Yeah, he got that leverage. So I leave. I leave it at that. Bet. Oh, okay. Who's your spade partner? Spade partner. Yeah. My spade partner. Me and my daddy, bro. We ride. Yeah, we gonna have to put that to the test then. Yeah. <laughs> question we call fra- <laughs> franchise uh, uh, question we call franchise sign away if you got a franchise a guy that you're going to build your team around you got to sign a guy that you want to keep on your team and you got to wave a guy that you don't have a spot for all right we're going to go running back edition we got Derek Henry got Ezekiel Elliott we got Nick Chubb who you keeping who you franchising who you waving franchising Henry uh, I'm gonna. What's the other one? I'm gonna wave uh, Zeke Elliott and Nick Chubb. I'm gonna wave Elliott and then do Chubb. I'm agree. I'm gonna roll with that too. Yeah, yeah. that's like that's what I'm rolling with. MBs, man, appreciate you coming on the podcast, man. Know you got a lot going on. You got to run, man. But I appreciate you catching up, man. Um, I'll be in town soon, man. Hopefully you be in town. We still got to get up and go to lunch or dinner sometime. I know this pandemic's made everything kind of crazy, but uh, be good to catch up, man. And plus, I seen LeVar and his son on social media, man. Hey, 